a few scattered ones in the intestinal area. And we have a lot of lymph nodes in our groin, which is the area just around the top of the instep of the foot. So these lymph nodes would become very sensitive if you've been travelling a long distance or been travelling by aircraft and have got tense, swollen legs. This is a prime area to work to, to reduce the swelling caused by flight or travel of any sort in the leg areas. Working out this area three or four times will very quickly reduce the lymphatic pressure which has built up. And the same applies exactly on the left foot. We have lymph nodes, again, a few in the intestine, which is across this area here. And also on the left foot, containing the areas to the left leg, if you had swollen feet or legs because of travel or an illness, you would work upon this area here to reduce the fluid retention in your leg and foot areas. Continue work in this space five or six times to get the maximum improvement. And a nice little rotation will take the pressure out of the legs when fluid has been built up there for some hours. And very quickly you'll see the legs return to their normal shape and size. The History of Shoes. Throughout history, shoe styles have varied tremendously as this collection from the Shoe Museum at the Pennsylvania College of Podiatric Medicine demonstrates. The first universal foot measurement was created in 1320 by King Edward II of England when he arbitrarily decided that a unit of measure would be a foot. His foot. It wasn't until the time of the Civil War that shoe history took another great leap forward when shoe manufacturers involved with the absorption and elimination of food and without this principle we're going to become very toxic in a short state of time. The Western world suffers from constipation, it's the Western disease and we also have more bowel conditions than ever before and these are all mainly due to Western living, stress and Western diet. So the areas we're going to work on in this particular case would be all the liver area to start with which will be found on the right foot. And we're going to work this area out from the medial to the lateral side using these very, very tiny forward creeping movements with our right thumb. We always go forwards. We never return or go backwards. And we don't use circular movements. It's always an ongoing forward pressure movement. Is that pressure acceptable to you? It's not, not too uncomfortable. Good. Because on the G should never at any time cause the patient to withdraw their feet in discomfort. It is supposed to be a relaxing therapy and if too much pain is created, the tension levels build and the whole treatment is void. Now we're going to go over onto the intestinal area and the beginning of the large intestine at the base of the foot is called the ileocecal valve. We do a nice hooking out technique to this one and that's a very good area to help chronic constipation and also any mucus accumulation which sometimes happens in the bowel following an infection. Then we're going to work the whole of the transverse colon which is across the midline of the foot from medial to lateral going right out to the outside edge keeping your lines nice and straight and descending right down into the very base of the heel. Reflexology is excellent for all bowel conditions. Irritable bowel syndrome, constipations, Crohn's disease, to name but a few. So we're going to change our thumb now and support the foot with the right hand and we're going to use our left thumb and work from the lateral edge back to the medial side. This is again all the large and all the small intestine. Now the small intestine is the area in the body that absorbs the nutrients from our food and processes them back into our bloodstream. So the large bowel is the eliminating feature 
and the small bow is the absorbency part. And these feet are nice and mobile and there doesn't seem to be any major sensitive spots. So I think that Jennifer's health at this time is, is very good. Then we're going to go over to the left foot and repeat a very similar process here. We're going to be working on the area from the midfoot to just below the metatarsal bones again. And this time, the left foot represents the stomach and the spleen, because your stomach and spleen are on the left side of your body, so like for like. So we're going to start working with our left thumb, holding the foot in a nice outward direction, and working from the medial to the lateral side again for these very fine, small, creeping movements. The stomach reaches right high up into the toes, the bone space just below the toes there. And we're going to return and do exactly the same procedure, working from the lateral edge, coming back to the medial side. From right to left and then left to right. To contact the corresponding part of the transverse colon, which is the large bowel, we're going to have a heel support with our right hand, we're going to use our left thumb, and we're going to work from the medial to the lateral side. So we'll contact the major large bowel, the descending part of the colon, and that is the part of the bowel that normally gets, gives rise to constipation and irritable bowel syndrome. It's far more common to get more inflammation on the left side because of the deep curves of the bowel than on the right. So we're continuing working all the way down to the very base of the heel. Is that all right for you? Not too many, dis no, no disaster areas either. Very good. The increase of all bowel disease today is diet related. So we'll watch what we eat. Lateral to medial, now coming back, using our right thumb this time. Nice forward creeping, stepping movement. It's covering every little tiny part of this foot because that one spot you may leave out may be the very part that needs working upon. And then the treatment becomes non-effective. The psychology of feet, bearing our souls. Renowned therapist Carl Jung believed that the foot actually represents an archetypal thallus, whereas Sigmund Freud, the father of psychotherapy, believed that the shoe represents a woman's most intimate parts. Together, Freud and Jung would have made a perfect pair. The sex life of the foot and the shoe is even showcased in one of our most popular fairy tales, Cinderella. 17th century author Charles Perrault originally intended it to be a romantic, if not erotic, story for adults. However, Perrault's scribe miswrote a key word. So instead of slipping her foot into a highly evocative slipper of fur, sweet Cinderella put her foot into a slipper of glass, and the children's fairy tale was born. The reproductive system The reproductive system comprises the uterus, two ovaries, and two fallopian tubes in the female, and the prostate, vas deferens, and testicle in the male. The female reproductive system is primarily there to, for procreation, and therefore the ovulatory secretions carry on from puberty until menopausal age. The sorts of illnesses we associate with the female are menstrual disorders, infertility, menopausal discomforts and fibrotic cysts. In the female, in the male, the main cause of problem is testicular cancer, which is on the increase, and enlarged prostate conditions, which we have already really talked about. So looking at the feet, because the uterus is a central organ, we find a little bit of, of it on the right foot, on the inside edge, and a little bit of it on the inside of the left foot. Anything through the center shares its space. The ovary is found on the lateral part of the foot, exactly between the ankle bone and the tip of the heel, a spot just there. And the fallopian tube joins the two areas together like a bracelet around the upper part of the foot. 
so we can be very successful in helping infertility, endometriosis, which is an exaggeration of the lining of the uterus, and any menstrual or menopausal dysfunctions. To work the uterine area in the female, we hold the foot in the outward direction, and with our index finger, we work directly upwards towards the ankle bone. Here we go, one and two. We need to take about three areas for that. We work the ovary area, we do exactly the same procedure on the lateral side of the foot, and with our index finger, we work up the ovary area. Again, two or three times, we should repeat that procedure. To join those two areas together, we start at the very low spot of the heel and work across the top of the instep, joining the uterus and the ovarian area together, making like a bracelet across the front part of the foot. To repeat that, we're going to work on the left foot once again. So again, to work the uterus area, we hold the foot in the outward direction, use your index finger and work upwards towards the ankle bone. We're going to do three times, three times across that area, two and three. And then on the outside of the foot, we have the ovary area and we're going to again work that area, one and two and three. If you have ovulation appearing, or you're about to appear, you'll find a sensitive reaction in the side of the ovary that is ovulating at the time of the month. Again, we join the two reflex points, the uterus and the ovary together by making a bracelet around the top of the instep. Many people have found that reflexology has in some way regulated their hormonal functions and have, they have produced a baby, many of whom have been childless for many years. So I would certainly think that if people are having trouble that way, before they go into all sorts of sophisticated treatments which uh, require a lot of drug therapy, give reflexology a try. It's amazing what it really can do for all manner of illnesses and conditions in the body. The prostate gland in the male is found on the insides of both your feet and we can isolate that area by providing a little measuring technique. If you put the third finger on the ankle bone and the thumb on the tip of the heel and draw your mid finger in line with it, you'll find the prostate gland reflex just there. You'll find a little bit on the right foot, again, and a little bit on the left because it's a centralised part of the body. And to work this area, we hold the foot in an outward position and using your index finger, work upwards towards the ankle bone. If you work about three times along this area, you'll find it very beneficial in reducing the congestion in the, in the prostate gland. The testicle area is on the lateral side of the foot, again midway between the ankle bone and the tip of your heel, centralised area just there. And to work this area out, we again work up that area to the tip of the heel in this nice, firm, creeping movement. The vas deferens join the two areas together, very much like a bracelet over the front of your foot. And to work those areas, we continue with our fingers together and travel round the front of the instep, creeping round to form just like a bracelet structure around the front of your foot. Make sure you don't overlap the fingers as you do that, otherwise you'll pinch the skin. But just end your treatment with about half an inch gap to spare. Going over to the left foot now, we're going to do exactly the same procedure. We're going to work on the prostate area on the left foot, holding the foot out and away from you. You're going to use your index finger and continue the work traveling up this area in line with the ankle bone. Use about three areas just there and then turn the foot to the outside and work the testicle area which is on the lateral side of the foot again midway between the ankle bone and the tip of the heel. We can join those two areas together 
as we're doing here. If any male patient has suffered or had a vasectomy operation of recent years, you're likely to find a great sensitivity in this area of the foot. Feet and sex. Playing footsie with your soulmate. Did you know your foot has a sex life? Many people find the foot being so sensitive is a highly erotic place on the body. In Indian lovemaking practices, there's a famous toe kiss in which a woman kisses a man's big toe. And according to sex researcher Alfred Kinsey, the toes of most individuals become curled or spread when there is erotic arousal. The endocrine system. The endocrine system is a system of glandular secretions, chemical messengers they are, and they're conveyed from the master gland in the brain called the pituitary. This is a tiny gland just the size of a pea, but it activates all the main functions of the physical body. So we hear a lot about hormones today. We hear about terrible problems with teenagers who are having hormonal growth spurts, which cause all sorts of dysfunction in families. Then we have the hormonal imbalances in our menstrual years, which give rise to all sorts of concerns there. And then towards the latter part, we have more problems with hormones when we reach the menopause. So reflexology does a great job in balancing the hormonal outputs of the body. So therefore, by, whether you're treating teenagers, menstruating females, or people in their later years who are at the end of the reproductive cycle, you can still gain great benefits from this. So the pituitary in the brain is found on the side of the big toe. We have a little bit on the right big toe and a little bit on the, the left. And that is the main prime target area that we should work upon frequently when we're trying to regulate hormonal functioning. The thyroid gland is the next gland, which is in the base of your neck. And we all know about those lucky people who can eat just whatever they like and remain rakishly thin and the other sorts who have to eat very little without gaining monstrous amounts of weight. And that is due to the metabolic rate which is indicated here in the thyroid activity. So if yours is overactive, you will be the lucky one. And if it's underactive, you'll be struggling, constantly being on diets. And the, the thyroid gland is found on the base of the first three toes, at the back and at the front. The next main interesting gland is called the adrenal gland. And that really is the flea and fight reactive gland. The ovary, which was on the lateral side of the foot, we've already talked about and worked upon. And that is the youth gland, or so they say, which produces estrogen and testosterone and is supposed to keep us young forever. So during our menstruating years, we're far less prone to all sorts of circulatory illness because estrogen keeps the arteries healthy gives a gloss to our skin and our hair and keeps us predominantly in good health. So therefore, after our menopausal years, when our ovaries are no longer functioning, we're much, less, much more prone to coronary artery disease and strokes. And the statistics say that we gain the same level as the male does once we get over 50. So to help these areas, these target areas for the hormonal reproductive areas and balancing our hormonal systems, we need to work first the pituitary gland, so we need to make a fine movement up the inside edge of the foot. Remember, the pituitary gland is behind your nose. So that nostril point that we worked on earlier in this video, we're going to repeat that once again. Remembering that as organs and functions in the body overlap each other, so do reflex points in the foot. So we can work seven or eight times up this area of the right side of the pituitary. And then we go over onto the left foot. We're going to work very slowly and carefully over the pituitary area on our left side. When we go to the thyroid gland, we're going to work it at the base of the first three toes, which is the thyroid and the neck area. Again, a dual area. We're going to work the first three toes to try and normalize or stimulate where necessary that function of the thyroid gland. One, two, and three. 
on the right foot. And again, the base of the first three toes on the left foot. The adrenal glands are found on the medial side of the foot, just this area here. And the adrenal glands primarily are there for the flee and fight reaction in your life. So when you lived in the cave and your prime concern was to fight off a wild boar, you need a lot of adrenaline in your veins to activate that function. Today, however, in this rather stressed Western world, most people have a very sensitive reaction in their adrenal gland. So if you want to calm somebody down, you certainly don't need to work that area out there. It's very good, therefore, if you're feeling very lethargic and are suffering from loss of energy, then the adrenal reflex point would be a good target point to work upon. Fashionable feet. Because if the shoe doesn't fit, wear it. 80% of all Americans and Europeans suffer from foot defects caused by wearing shoes. And the majority of those suffering are women. Women have one inventive female to thank for this, Catherine de' Medici. When this 16th century daughter of a Florentine family moved to France to wed Henry II, she brought several pairs of shoes specially designed to make her taller. Her high heels became an instant sensation. Women began wearing heels so high that they had to use walking staffs and be carried up and down stairs. And despite high heels' very obvious detriments, they remain extremely popular to this day. The urinary system The urinary system comprises two kidneys, two ureter tubes, and one bladder, and the urethra, which is the exit. And the kidneys are there to detoxify and purify the blood. Without their prime function, you will become uremic, severely poisoned within a few hours. The main conditions that we can help with reflexology are cystitis in the female, which is an inflammation of the bladder, nephritis, which is an inflammation of the kidneys, prostate enlargement in the male, which has great benefits. We've also been able to give good results with people suffering from kidney stones. So when we look at the foot and the reaction to the feet and the matching of the body, because the, the um, bladder is in the central line of the body, the central dividing line, we find that the reflex points to that on the inside of both feet. So we have half the reflex to the bladder on the right, and the other half on the left. So in order to start working on this, we work in line with the ankle bone, this puffy area here, just work up and around that section, work up the ureter tube, which is on the medial side, just behind the spinal area. We cross over and work up towards the kidney space there. Work out the area two or three times. As the kidney function is normally very sensitive in most people, and that in turn is really due to a lot of caffeine in the diet, um, alcohol, and various additives in our foodstuffs today, the kidney reflexes are normally quite sensitive in most people. And so in order to work that out effectively and cause as little sensitivity to the patient as possible, we do a nice firm rotation. So applying the pressure with the thumb on the point, you turn the foot inwards, and that works the kidney out, but is much more comfortable to the patient concerned. We repeat the same procedure going over to the left foot, where we have the second half of the bladder reflex, which is just here. And we're going to work up again the ureter tube, cross over into the kidney space, work two or three times over that kidney area, Again, firm pressure on the point and nicely turn the foot in an inward direction. It's quite an easy way to work this particular section of the body and very beneficial for elimination purposes as well. The prostate in the male is on the inside edge of both feet, it's just there. And a lot of males at the age of 40 or, or just above get enlarged prostate conditions, it's very common. This will give them retention of urine or frequency of urinating, particularly at night. And we have found during our treatment sessions that 
Frequent working on this particular area can relieve the stress of this condition. In fact, many patients who've been booked for surgery have never had to have it. The way in which you find this particular point is exactly midway between the ankle bone and the tip of the heel. If you draw your midfinger in line with it, it's exactly in that space, centralised. So we have the finger on the ankle bone and the tip of the heel, draw the midfinger in line and the prostate gland is found just there. And a nice way of working that is to put the finger on that space and turn in the direction, in an inward direction of the foot. And that again works the prostate area. We repeat exactly the same performance to the, the prostate gland on the inside of the right foot. Again, by putting our mid finger to isolate the point and underneath the heel support, put the mid finger on the point and nicely rotate the foot, retaining the pressure of that point with your finger. Saw to saw, sacred feet. Many cultures and religions agree upon the sacred nature of the spiritual teacher's feet. It is the feet of the spiritual teacher, be it a saint, a particular god, goddess, or prophet, which are singled out and revered more than any other part of the body. This may be because the feet of spiritual teachers represent transcendence, their footsteps supposedly showing the way to truth, to enlightenment. According to Buddhist tradition, when Buddha was first born, he was able to walk instantly, lotuses appearing under his feet. Both Hindus and Buddhists believe that lotuses oftentimes represent energy centers or chakras, which run throughout our bodies, connecting us to one another, to the entire universe. It is believed that the chakras located on the soles of the feet connect us with the energy of the earth.